Okay, in this video lecture, I'm going to um, do a short review of the of topic 15 on translation. Um, this was the topic we covered the week, week before you guys left for spring break. Uh, one thing to remember is that I'm only going to cover about half of this topic in this video lecture, so be sure to study the rest of this topic um, that isn't covered here. But I'm going to go over how uh, translation is initiated and, and how it happens um, to make protein. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, translation with the ribosome. And the ribosome is a ribonucleoprotein. And what this means is this is a very important word, ribonucleoprotein, because it means the complex of proteins and a special form of RNA called ribosomal RNA or rRNA. And remember, there were four types of RNA we talked about mRNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA and microRNA or small interfering RNAs that, that we got to later in um, the next topic. So ribosomal RNA is a structural and catalytic um, form of RNA that makes up part of the overall ribosome. And the key to remember on the ribosomes is it's composed of multiple subunits. It's composed of a large subunit here, and this is the portion of the ribosome that catalyzes the formation of the peptide bond. And then the small subunit is another part of the ribosome that essentially binds to the mRNA and is responsible for matching the tRNA anticodon to the mRNA codon. And so if you look over here, here's showing the different subunits. I don't need you to remember the numbers here, but what I do want you to understand is that what this is showing is that the ribosome is a complex of RNA and proteins. And here's the large subunit and the small subunit. They're called that just because of the molecular weight of each subunit. You can see here the small one is only 1.4 million molecular weight large and this one is essentially double the size. So that's why this is large and this is small. And then just remember they come together to form the ribosome as a whole and the small subunit binds to the mRNA. So you can kind of picture the mRNA running through the small subunit and the large subunit is where the actual amino acids will form peptide bonds with each other. Okay. So that's the ribosome. That's kind of the key um, complex responsible for mediating translation. So if we look closer at the ribosome, we find that the ribosome has three uh, important sites. And these are called the A site, the P site, and the E site. And essentially these sites correspond to where tRNA is found within the ribosome during translation. And we'll get to the individual sites and what they do, but remember the A site is essentially where a tRNA adds to the ribosome. So this is the site in which a new tRNA comes in to the empty site of the ribosome and binds to its corresponding codon here in the mRNA. So let's imagine the mRNA is running through here, right? The P site is the site responsible for holding the peptide. We, I call this the peptide site. And essentially during translation, there would be a tRNA. I'll just draw a big T here. All right, that's basically holding the chain of the polypeptide in place while a new tRNA adds to the A site. And the E site essentially stands for eject. And this is the site in which after this peptide is transferred to a new amino, a amino acid here, this empty tRNA moves to the E site and essentially that ejects the tRNA to the cytoplasm. It's no longer needed. Okay, so the A site, the P site, and the E site, and I want you to understand and know um, if I showed you this picture, uh, which site is named which. Okay, so let's talk about initially how translation is um, initiated. So there's two two phases. First is the start of translation, and then the second phase is just the continuation of translation. So to start translation, um, the act, the ribosome itself actually isn't put together yet. All we have to start translation is the small ribosomal subunit. This is the part of the ribosome that binds the mRNA. You also have a special tRNA molecule called initiator tRNA. And this initiator tRNA carries methionine. Remember, methionine is always found at the start of translation, okay, because it, it codes the codon for methionine is AUG. And this is the, what's called the start codon, and that codes for methionine. What's interesting about initiation is that the methionine initially binds to what will become the P site of the ribosome. 
So it's not actually bound to the A site. When initiate when translation is first started, the methionine starts in the P site, and you'll see why in a second. And then not shown here, but in, uh, including all of these along with the initiator tRNA and the small ribosomal subunit, there's a whole lot of proteins that are involved called translation initiation factors. And these are just a bunch of different proteins that aid in, tran in, in starting the process of translation. Okay, so step one is the initiator tRNA in the small ribosomal subunit and the translation initiation factors come together in a complex. You'll notice here that there is no mRNA yet. We're just making the complex to begin with. Okay, the next step is the small subunit, the initiator tRNA and the initiation factors bind to the five prime cap of the mRNA. So remember, this is the five prime seven methyl guanosine cap, okay? And this serves as a landmark site for the start of the mRNA at the very end. And so this actually serves as a binding site for this complex. So step two essentially is this, the initiation complex binds to the five prime cap. Step three, once the initiation complex, the small ribosomal subunit and the initiator tRNA and the factors bind to the five prime cap, this actually starts moving down the mRNA and it will scan the mRNA for the very first start codon. And remember, our start codon is AUG because that's the matching nucleotide sequence for the anticodon of this initiator tRNA. So as it scans down from five prime three to three prime direction, it's going to look for an AUG. Okay, so that's step three is essentially it starts the five prime cap and starts scanning to the three prime direction for the start codon. And then step four is once it binds and finds the start codon, the tRNA stops. It stops scanning for the mRNA, it binds to this region, and it stops the small subunit from, from moving as well. Okay, at this point, then the large ribosomal subunit will come on top of the complex and make the fully functional ribosome. Okay, so the large ribosomal subunit doesn't even get added until the initiator tRNA binds to its AUG codon. So this completes the ribosome, and now you see why the initiator tRNA, tRNA was first put in this P site of the ribosome. Because once it comes together, now we have an empty A site right here that a new tRNA can add to and translation can begin. Okay, and so step four is, is once the initiator tRNA binds to the AUG, the large ribosomal subunit completes the ribosome. Lastly, step five is essentially the start of translation. You get your first tRNA, or what would be your second tRNA, being added to the A site here, and now you can form your very first peptide bond between methionine and whatever the next amino acid is. And translation will, will now begin. Okay, so to review, essentially, the very first step is the initiator tRNA, the small ribosomal subunit, and initiation factors bind together in, I guess you could call it an initiation complex. That complex then binds the five prime cap of the mRNA. That complex now, once bound to the five prime cap, starts moving in the three prime direction to scan for the AUG site. Once bound to the AUG site, the large ribosomal subunit comes on top of the complex and, and completes the ribosome, forms the fully functional ribosome, which now has an empty A site. And so then the very last step is a new tRNA gets added to the A site and the first peptide bond is formed between the tRNA and the P site here, the initiator tRNA, and the tRNA and the A site here. Okay, and then translation can continue from there. So that's translation initiation. Again, what I recommend for these stepwise processes is to make flashcards, and on one side of the flashcard, write step one, step two, step three, and then on the other side of the flashcard, write what the step is, okay, or, or somehow a way to organize them, and then I would jumble them up and try and put them in the order in which they occur. So that's initiation. That's actually initiation is more complicated than, than the actual process of translation because once you've started translation, it's a pretty straightforward process. 
So we're going to start with step one in which you have a growing polypeptide chain here and that's bound to the tRNA that's sitting in the P site. That's why I call it the peptide site. And what happens is in the very first step, a brand new tRNA that contains an amino acid to be added to the polypeptide is added to the A site, again, what we call the addition site. At the same time that the, that the tRNA is added to the A site, the empty tRNA that was sitting in the E site is ejected. Okay, There's kind of a simultaneous movement. You get addition and ejection all at the same time. And now that's step one. Step two is once you have a new tRNA in the A site and you have an existing tRNA which contains your growing polypeptide in the P site, a peptide bond is formed between these two amino acids. So you can see here three and four and this peptide bond, bond is four. Now what you'll notice here is that now the, the tRNA that is in the A site, right here, now is holding the entire polypeptide chain. Okay, so the polypeptide chain was transferred over completely to the new tRNA that was added at this A site. Now this is after the peptide bond is formed, obviously. So now you have a tRNA here in what was once um, containing all of the golden polypeptide, this tRNA is now empty. So step one, new tRNA is added to the A site. Empty tRNA is ejected from the E site. Step two, peptide bond is formed between the amino acids found in the P site and in the A site. And the transfer of the growing polypeptide is moved over so that the tRNA in the A site holds it. Step three, is the large ribosomal subunit translocates. Translocates is just a fancy word for moving forward. And so what happens is this large part of the subunit moves forward. And then step four is simply the small subunit moves forward. So let's show step four real quick. Step four is the small subunit now moves forward. And look what's happened now. After those four steps, now the A site is completely empty. The P site now contains the polypeptide again with this tRNA, and the E site now contains the tRNA that is no longer holding any kind of amino acid or growing polypeptide chain. So step one through four creates this scenario again where you can go ahead and repeat this in a cycle. If you add a tRNA to the A site, you'll eject the tRNA from the E site, okay? And that again here is step one of translation. And this just cycles over and over again in a repeating fashion until translation is done. Okay, so let's review this again as well. And again, you can use this let's review slide to make your, your flashcards. Step one, addition of new tRNA, ejection of old tRNA. Step two, peptide bond formation between the two amino acids found in the P site and the A site. Step three, large subunit translocates forward. Step four, small subunit translate locates forward. This completes the ribosome. This now creates a new empty A site. This creates a tRNA that is empty now and the E site to be ejected. And now the growing polypeptide is transferred into the P site, okay, where it's being held until the next amino acid comes in. Okay, and this continues over and over again until termination of translation. And the last slide I want to go over is how does termination happen? Remember, there are three stop codons that code for translation termination, UAG, UAA, and UGA. And one thing to remember is that these stop codons do not actually code for an amino acid. So although there are 64 codons, remember, only 61 code for amino acids code for AA. Okay, because three of them are the stop codons and they actually don't code for a tRNA. There is no tRNA that binds to this. In fact, what happens are special proteins called release factors will recognize the stop codon that's exposed in the A site here and they'll bind to the ribosome and completely disassemble the ribosome. Okay, this involves water. What they'll do is the release factor will come in, bind, so, let, so let's start over. You have in the A site, you have exposed a stop codon. What happens is the release factor will bind to that stop codon. It uses water and catalyzes 
The hydrolysis of this interaction here between the tRNA and the growing polypeptide and that releases the polypeptide into the cytoplasm so that protein is now finished and made. And what it also does is once the large ribosomal subunit translocates, it disassembles the entire ribosome off of the mRNA. So it does several things. First, it binds to the stop codon. Second, it releases the growing polypeptide chain from the ribosome. So the, the polypeptide chain is free in the cytoplasm and it dis disassembles the ribosome off of the mRNA. And this ribosome now can go and reassemble at the very start of a new mRNA and translate more proteins. Okay, so that's this review lecture on translation. I really want you to know the stepwise um, or the steps of translation initiation, and I want you to also know the steps of just normal translation and how it stops.